Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to something a little bit different for the channel. Today, we're looking at some news within the Star Wars community. Now, while I don't exactly intend this video to be an expose, we are covering some fairly serious allegations of art theft from the community towards a Lucasfilm hired author. Because of the sensitive nature of this subject, and because the allegations are against a single, named, well-known person, I want to encourage you guys not to harass or bother anyone featured in today's video, especially while we still don't have the full context. It's only fair. Anyway, as many of you guys know, the Star Wars fan art community is absolutely gigantic and very vibrant. Today, we're looking at allegations against Joe Caroni, an established artist who has illustrated for Lucasfilm and Star Wars for over 20 years. Specifically, the allegations circling across the internet are that Joe utilized and passed off as his own several pieces of Star Wars fan art for reference books that he was contracted to work on. Specifically, the books Rebel Files and The Imperial Handbook. The Imperial Handbook is a Legends era reference book published by Becker and Meyer after the Disney buyout, while Rebel Files is similar but under the new canon. On February 16th, well-known Star Wars fan modeler, artist, and general community member Fractal Sponge posted an article on his blog titled Hey Disney and Joe Caroni. This blog, which I'll link below, and by the way, while you're there, I highly encourage you to check out Fractal's work, highlights the fact that the Imperial Handbook contains several images which were obviously just slightly photoshopped versions of models he's made in the past. The one I want to talk about first is under the heading Executor Super Star Destroyer. I was actually aware of the use of this image in the past because I've referenced the Imperial Handbook while making videos and because the image is notable. That's not the rear end of an Executor Super Star Destroyer, it's actually an Asserter. However, I just assumed that this was a publishing error. We see stuff like this all the time. For example, the new Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels has an MC-80 Liberty type under the Home 1 banner. When I saw that model, I incorrectly assumed that Fractal Sponge's work was properly licensed and credited, especially because the Asserter is actually an original creation of Fractal Sponge. And I simply assumed the ship model was owned by Lucasfilm because it had previously been included in the Essential Guide to Warfare within various images. I also assumed that he was properly credited for his work, because it's such a blatant use of a well-known model that to not do so just seems ridiculous. However, it turns out that not only was Fractal not credited whatsoever in the book, but that Joe specifically was credited as the artist for these images. What's more, Fractal explained in the comment section for the post, including in a response to me, that Lucasfilm did not own the entire model for the vessel such that they could just pull random angles and render it. Rather, when the Guide to Warfare was being created, they only actually contracted for specific renders. Notably, the backside of the Asserter used in the book was not one of those purchased, and even if it had been, credit should have at least been given to the proper artist rather than to Joe. So basically to summarize, if you were to look at the Imperial Handbook, you'd see a ship titled the Executor attributed to an artist who did not actually create it, and this is 100% Fractal's model, there is no question. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Not only was Fractal not credited or paid for this image, but the book also used renders of his Lambda Shuttle and Imperial Star Destroyer renders, and this is really blatant. As a fan of Fractals and someone who, with credit to the artist, includes them in his thumbnails and videos, I would recognize these instantly. There is zero doubt that these are his models. And it's not surprising, Fractal's art is placed freely on his website in front of a black background, so it's very easy to simply clip his ships out and to use them for whatever. In fact, as he pointed out in the comments and in an email to me, his work has been jacked in this manner on previous occasions, included on everything from toy boxes to even a trailer for The Force Unleashed. His Imperial Star Destroyer model specifically is actually so good that it's often included on internal Lucasfilm art. Of course, the use of internal art is a lot different than using it for promotional purposes or actually selling it as part of a book. Like with the Asserter, the Imperial Handbook specifically credits the Lambda and ISD images to Joe. 
just to reiterate, they're clearly Fractals models with very slight Photoshop modifications. Regardless of what's happened or who's at fault, that is problematic. However, this is not the only instance of Joe Caroni being associated with stolen art. This brings us to Rebel Files, a similar book also produced by Becker Meyer, but about the Alliance and under the new canon. If we go to page 52, we see illustrations of the Asteroid Dreadnought, which is essentially the canon version of the Eye of Palpatine and the Torpedo Sphere. For this video, I want to focus specifically on the Torpedo Sphere, because I honestly think it's sufficient to illustrate my point. Put simply, and this is incredibly strange, this image is a photoshopped version of a model of the Torpedo Sphere created for Empire at War, specifically by prolific modern evil Jedi. The idea that a 10 year old model would be adapted with a very slight photoshop for an official Star Wars book is just so strange. But lo and behold, if we go to the mod page for Sins of a Galactic Empire, for example, we can see that it's really just the exact same ship with a few differences in lighting and of course a little red dot near the front. Look at the paneling for instance, and I actually spoke with Evil Jedi who could confirm with 100% certainty that this was his model, if you had any doubts. Evil Jedi's torpedo sphere was actually somewhat of a deviation from prior Legends designs, which more or less had the vessel completely flat, rather than having this paneling. However, because he allowed his model to be used in other mods, it actually gained a lot of popularity. But that doesn't mean that it can simply be passed off as someone's art in an official Star Wars product. I'll get to a quote from Evil Jedi and Fractal Sponge on this situation in just a second, but when researching this, I was also sent allegations regarding a GR-75 model from that same book as well and the Eye of Palpatine. I was unable to verify these with certainty, but at this point, I find it likely that these were also adapted from the mod community. And you know what? There may be other examples within other books. This could be an isolated situation, or it could be the tip of the iceberg. We really don't know. But what does it all mean? Who is to blame? These are two questions that I don't think I can answer either. What I do know is that our vibrant fan art community needs to be protected, and that artists need to be appreciated and credited, especially when used in official Star Wars work. Artists work hard, they pump life into the community. Empire War modders, for example, have kept us playing Star Wars strategy games despite there being no real recent offerings. However, when compared to Lucasfilm or Star Wars itself, these people have no voice. And any lack of attribution, and more blatantly, any stealing of assets is very serious. So we know it's bad and we know it shouldn't happen, but we don't know who's to blame. Was this something done by Joe? Or was it the publisher, Becker Mayer? I don't think we have enough information to answer that right now. Nonetheless, I thought it'd be interesting to read a couple of quotes prepared by the artist featured in today's video. First, Evil Jedi, who said, and I quote, I cannot determine who composited the images, or how they were credited. It could be that the credited artist had nothing to do with the inclusion of the specific designs, and an uncredited staffer or copy editor found some of the images and content online and dropped it to save time and cost. I don't have insight into their art pipeline, quality, and editorial control. However, the ship designs of the Torpedo Sphere and World Devastator are obviously unique from other published sources, and represent interpretations that I created over a decade ago, including details that are not present on any official material. I would have absolutely no issue with the images or models being used as a reference to create a new unique work, line perspective, or to get inspiration for details. Given the artistic talent I have seen from the rest of the artists that are credited, it is very difficult to reconcile using decades old screenshots with simple Photoshop filters that clash with the rest of the artwork. The copy pasting is sloppy and lazy. I can't speak for Fractal, but the same problem exists there and is made even more obnoxious by the failure to properly use the correct images when the executor has many canonical representations. This appears to me to be a failure of quality control and editorial review. Regardless regardless of specifically who inserted the images. I find this to be an incredibly intelligent and nuanced response. I found the same to be true when I reached out to Fractal Sponge. This is what he said, and he wanted me to remind you guys that he is referring to his own experiences, and that he is not a lawyer. 
I've also contextualized or slightly editorialized his statement, but here's what it is. For licensing, I think usually artists are dealt with by Lucasfilm licensing licensees, not Disney or Lucasfilm directly, unless it's one of the core units operating. So a book editor or a game studio would arrange for illustrations or modeling work and arrange the terms, not corporate HQ. It's not really Disney or Lucasfilm per se that is stealing, but probably one of their licensees. And that said, even licensees might not know if Joe was the one responsible for it, but still responsible for bad oversight. Unless there is directives from on high, then it's much more likely to be isolated individuals and not organized corporate malfeasance, no matter how satisfying a story that might be. He also expressed to me that during his work with Star Wars, he never communicated with Lucas film or any parent company, but rather an editor or publisher. He also said, paint over or use of other assets like photos or public models for concept art is not unusual, but this is usually with significantly more work and composition or editing attached to it. This example is literally desaturating in Photoshop and making an alpha channel, two clicks. So just to summarize what he's saying, ultimately individual works are the responsibility of the person licensing the Star Wars brand. In this case, the book editor, or perhaps publisher, rather than Disney or Lucasfilm themselves. In a comment on his blog, he also said something that mirrored the words of Evil Jedi, speaking about how his disappointment is tied more to the lack of artistic merit in doing such a thing, rather than the fact that he wasn't paid. Here's the quote. Guys, I'm fairly certain there's no legal recourse, and I'm not seeking any. This is the Star Wars IP, and I've been over this ground before. For something just as blatant, the original Force Unleashed cinematic trailer used my released ISD model, lock, stock, and barrel. Fun cinematic, but their major asset was totally lifted. Long ago, I used to release models, but I stopped when that happened. There's always a cost to playing around in an established universe, and making art public. I've seen my renders used as the basis for paint overs and such for internal art at ILM, but that's at least using it for concept art and exploration. Took much more work to do, and was not something that was for immediate public and commercial use. This is different. I'm not really annoyed about not getting paid. I'm annoyed that someone put so little work into using my stuff without attribution, and likely got paid a decent amount for two minutes of work in Photoshop, and will likely keep doing it over and over on his future contracts with other people's stuff. I'm annoyed that the entire editorial team and the artist couldn't be arsed to even get their ships right. As for Joe, the book cited him as the illustrator for those pages. It's possible the editor told him to do it, but it's his name on the work, and as far as I know, he's responsible. So that's that. Some pretty serious issues at play. I think both artists presented incredibly nuanced interpretations of the situation. I can't say specifically whether it was Joe or someone else who included images in these two works. However, I know the community and the artists deserve answers and deserve better. Now, I did reach out to Joe for a comment, and specifically I messaged him on Facebook, and I know he read at least my first couple of messages. However, he was either unwilling or unable to get back to me. As a note, I specifically offered and stated that if he intended at some point to comment on this issue, that I was willing to push back this video. And had a sufficient explanation been provided to the community, this video never would have been made at all. But here it is. I want to give a special thanks to Evil Jedi, Corey Loses, Strobe, Garrus, and others from the Empire War modding community for helping with this video, as well as providing evidence, as well as the various people who sent me the original blog post. Of course, I'd also like to thank Fractal Sponge, not only for talking with me, which I really, really appreciated, but for making the original blog post in the first place. Personally, I was naive, and I didn't know that things so blatant would happen within the Star Wars community. Anyway guys, that is all I have to say about this topic. I'd like to remind everyone, just one more time, to not go harass the artist, especially where we don't know exactly what happened. However, if this issue is important to you, of course feel free to share this video, or perhaps even better, Fractal Sponge's initial post. I'm very curious to hear what you guys all think of this situation, so let me know down in the comment section. On one last note, I would finally like to say thank you to everyone who sent me the story in the first place. If you guys enjoy videos like this, maybe I will do them a bit more often, especially once I get a camera and a full office setup. Anyway guys, that is all for now. This has been Eckhart's Ladder. Until next time, may the force be with you.